Hi, I'm Dr. William Starzyak, and in this video, I'm going to talk about releasing shock trauma. Shock trauma is the result of some sort of unexpected traumatic event. We can think of this as being a physical event or injury, like a car accident, a fall down the stairs, but it can also be emotional, uh, apparent doing something, saying something uh, unexpectedly hurtful. And depending on the nature of the trauma, if it's more physical or more emotional, well, it'll have either more physical or more emotional ramifications. And one thing that's common between different types of shock trauma is that they decrease our fluidity. We have a naturally fluid nature that is adaptable and dynamic. When we experience trauma, a degree of that adaptability is, in some sense, frozen or stuck. That's the, you know, that the shock state of it. So as I said, this can show up as more of a restriction in emotions. So there can be anxiety, uh, or fear, they're kind of very similar, fear and anxiety are on this same spectrum. Or physically, there can be an absence of motion that can lead to pain. So how do we release these shock traumas? I think if you're listening to this video, you've probably already acknowledged that uh, trauma creates some sort of residue. Uh, one of the pitfalls of working with trauma is trying to fix it, trying to change it, trying to make it better. So we, we, we decide, hey, you know, I have some sort of trauma residue, now I need to start working on it. And then we're doing all of this stuff, we're taking these courses, we're talking to people about our shock trauma, we're explaining our behavior based upon our shock trauma. And so basically, we're getting all of this identity from trauma. And that's a payoff because we're reaffirming our sense of self by talking to other people about this trauma and we're identifying our sense of self with this trauma. Trying to fix it, trying to change it, being the doer will not affect shock trauma. What we need to do is we need to return to a neutral state. And then the healing force that flows through us will resolve the trauma at the appropriate speed. It will return it to fluidity at the appropriate speed, the speed which is able to be integrated by the body and mind. Now the issue is with returning to neutral because when there's a trauma, the original neutral is shifted so that an aspect of our being is kind of stuck. It's not flowing. And it's putting a strain on the stuff that is, that is not as stuck. And this applies whether it is emotional um, or physical. So what can we do to find that neutral after a trauma has changed our neutral? Well, this is the meditative state. As I begin to describe to you the practice of entering the mind state for allowing shock trauma to release... It's the same as the meditative state. It's non-judgment. Accepting what comes into the mind without resistance. It's mindfulness. Noticing whatever comes into the mind without any sort of resistance as well. So we, we notice it. We accept it. We're not trying to fix it, change it, figure anything out. So we're not striving. We're not trying to get anywhere. We're not trying to release anything. We're not trying to make anything better. We're simply letting go. We're letting go and allowing whatever shows up to be okay. Now, frequently we'll use our breathing to anchor the awareness and give the mind something to do so it's not feeling overly restless. But gradually, as the mind relaxes with the breathing, 
then the awareness need not be held individually on just one part of the body and the sensation of breath, but it can be allowed to rest upon all of the physical sensations and still be calm and peaceful. Because it's not that we're going in and looking to check all these things, it's just an even awareness of them. So typically, even if we've had trauma, with practice of this approach, we'll end up being able to touch these states of peace. These, these periods of time where we let go very deeply and this unity of our body, mind, spirit, you know, emotions, everything comes to this point of balance and we feel this deep relaxation. And that won't always bring up some particular trauma. We have to go to a particular depth until that trauma is ready to be released. And it also needs to be ripe in some sense. During these periods of going to neutral, using this meditative approach, whether you're sitting or laying down, it doesn't matter. Um, for phys releasing things in the physical body, laying down can sometimes be very important. But it's usually a balance of the two over time. Well, initially, we, we may begin to get some insight and greater understanding into the shock trauma without looking for it. If, if something is a problem in our day-to-day -day life, if a trauma is affecting us, then when we go to stillness and quietness where we're not intending to give rise to any sort of thinking or any mental processes, and we become aware of whatever does come into our minds, well, if the trauma is an issue, at some point it's going to show itself in those times of stillness and quiet without being looked for. And the natural motion of the body is towards release. It's towards healing. So if we have shifted into neutral and we're not actively reacting to feelings, memories, um, mental uh, formations, things like ideas. If we're in a place of, of neutral and we're calm and we're relaxing, and then those elements associated with the shock trauma come up, it means that our healing force is at work on them. That entering into that neutral state has allowed it to gain access to that layer of our being that has become frozen or stiff. And all we need to do is let everything be okay. Not to try to take over that process, not to try to figure out how to fix it, because we can't fix it with our thinking. The, it's this natural healing force, the same thing that grew us from an embryo, that decides how fast our heart beats, that's healing our body every minute, producing new cells, orchestrating this whole beautiful, incredibly intricate, exquisite, and elaborate dance. That will also heal us if we can allow ourselves to let go. So the one way to keep these patterns established by trauma in place is to continually like try to fix them, think about them, talk about them, tell other people about them. And all of these things except letting go Right? We don't even need to direct our attention towards them. If we find our direction, our attention becomes directed towards them, like thoughts about the trauma just come up to the surface, well, that then is when it's healing itself, when it's resolving itself. So we simply need to allow the voluntary part of our mind to relax, to become passive, but for us to still stay conscious. And that's what gives our bodies greatest access to the healing force and will allow these things to work themselves out. Now, there are further steps to this practice. There are ways in which this can be made into a little bit more of an active pro process where there's some passive aspects and then there's some active um, working with it. But as far as releasing shock trauma, the release is passive. We cannot force ourselves to let go of shock trauma, and we shouldn't try. 
Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my video. If this brings up any questions for you, or if you have other opinions, even if they're counter to my own, please let's start a conversation in the comments. And if you like this video, press the like button, check out my other videos, and please subscribe to my channel.